beginning to look a lot like Christmas. Everywhere you go, take a look at the five and ten. It's glistening once again with candy canes and silver lanes aglow. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. Toys in every store. But the prettiest sight to see is the holly that will be on your own front door. Happy holidays, ladies and gentlemen. We are back. Indeed. I mean, it's not December yet, but it's very you know thematic what? to the show. Yep. And you know what, Brian? I enter Christmas mode as soon as we get close to Thanksgiving. I don't know about you, but I'm in Christmas mode around mid-November, so. I usually wait till Black Friday. I feel that. I feel that. But yeah, like Brian said, it was very, it's very thematic to the show. And after watching the show, I was, I, was, I mean, I was, like I said, I, in a Christmas mood pretty much from like mid-November up until the, you know, up until after New, like two weeks after New Year's. So, uh, yeah, I watching it definitely made me even more excited, uh, you know, for the season, even though, you know, this year isn't the best. But honestly, that's why I think this year we need Christmas more than ever. Um, so, we yeah. need a little Christmas right this yeah. very moment. <laughs> um, we are on the same page there. But, yeah. So the show we are talking about today was actually one that Brian recommended for us to do, and I'm really glad he did. Uh, it's a nice little fluffy holiday uh, rom-com called Dash and Lily. Um, I, I saw not... it randomly. I heard about this a while back, mm-hmm. and then I just randomly saw it on like the day that it popped up on Netflix, and I watched the trailer saw who was in it yeah austin, was... austin abrams is one is uh dash she, i don't know the actor who plays lily's name but austin abrams if you do not know he uh played the role of ethan in euphoria he also played the role of mark in this is us um and he also and he also was the male lead in paper towns Another yep. YA ad- adaptation. He also he was also um, the lead in another YA movie that I can't think of right now that I watched with Elizabeth. I cannot remember off the top of my head, but I, he was in that too when he was really good. Um, That's not Paper Towns? It was not Paper Towns. It was something else. Okay. Um, yep. Because uh, I'm pretty sure... Uh, I, no, actually, Paper Towns wasn't him. I think Paper Towns was Nat Wolf. Or one of the Wolf hmm. Boys. Yeah, one of the Wolf Boys was Paper Towns. But I, I can see where the confusion goes. He does look he does look like he could be one of them. Um but yeah, so um as my little uh, Carol intro implies, this is um a rom com that takes place over the Christmas season. More specifically like Christmas all the way up to New Year's Eve. And also Hanukkah. Oh yeah, and also Hanukkah. We cannot forget about Hanukkah. Han- Hanukkah does play a little bit uh, of a part in the show as well. Um, but yeah, and it introduced me to a new genre of music I didn't know about. Yeah, same. Pretty interesting. Um, but yeah, so uh, basically, it's this uh, really interesting like Christmas love story. And I'm not going to lie, you know, when I saw the trailer and I, um, you know, read the premise, I was like, okay, this is going to be cute. It's going to be good. I've heard good things about it, but I'm not expecting anything. Little did I know, like, I watched, like, one episode and I'm like, all right, I'm invested. (laughs) I get attached to characters way too easily. (laughs) Because, like, by episode two, I was like, all right, just hurry up already. Let's do this. I'm here for it. Um, by the way, by the way, uh, I googled it real quick. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's not the lead, but he is in Paper Towns. Okay. And he was also Chemical Hearts. That's Lily Reinhardt. 
Yeah, that's the one. Chemical Hearts. It was the Hulu. Yeah, the Hulu movie. Yeah, that's the one I was thinking of. Thank you. I knew it was some. I knew it was something with Lily Reinhardt in it. That one was really good, by the way. Like, definitely recommend that to anybody who's into like the YA romance stuff. But anyway, so essentially, right? Uh, this is a holiday story set in New York, and one of the main reasons I know it's set in New York is because uh, the place of the inciting incident is probably one of my favorite bookstores in the city, The Strand. And as as a as a you know native New Yorker and a book nerd, I was like, oh shit, I know this place. It's it's honestly one of my favorite places to hang out whenever I go back home. Um, but yeah, um, so this this kid Dash he ends up finding this book randomly placed in the Strand, and it turned out to be a notebook with a set of written instructions. And the uh, and the title just simply says, "Do you dare?" Mm-hmm. And so. He's intrigued, so he decides to, you know, uh, start, like, you know, following the instructions and basically doing these correspondences by leaving a message for the original writer in this notebook to, you know, then go pick it up at a designated location, you know, read their response, and then, you know, they go back and forth for a bit, and over yeah. the course of the holiday season... They start to develop, you know, chemistry and feelings for each other. And, you know, the anticipation for the meetup builds up. And then, you know, more stuff happens in between, which we'll get into in, like, the spoiler section. Yes. And uh, most of the, most of what they're doing back and forth initially is just a series of dares, which uh, is actually uh, what the book that it's based upon is like uh named after uh did you dash and lily's book of dares nice that's the name of the book that it was based upon and so yeah like jay said and we get to see his side but we also get to see the other side yeah so the other to, person yeah so to, to kind of like i mean while, while we're still in the spoiler free section Dash is kind of your, like, stereotypical Christmas rom-com bah humbuggy protagonist. Mm -hmm. Where he's, like, cynical and jaded. He's about 17. And, um, you know, he hasn't really had that many good Christmas experiences. So he's, you know, kind of bleh on the holiday season. Um, and he seems to be a little bit of a downer. He does have friends, so it's not like he's, like, super stereotypical, like... Bah humbug protagonist where he's kind of a dick and doesn't have any friends. Uh, he is, you know, we can see right off bat that he's a genuinely nice kid and that he does have friends, and more, um, more so in particular his best friend Boomer, who uh, works at his family's pizza shop. So that's pretty cool. Um, and then we get to see Lily, who is, of course, because we have one person who's the you know, bah humbug protagonist. We've got the other one who is like super Christmas person, um, and she's an adorable yeah. little weirdo who just absolutely loves everything Christmas, and she is precious and must be protected at all times. Definitely, she kind of reminds me of um, Vanessa Hudgens mixed with '90s Drew Barrymore. Totally could see that. Uh, it's just, she's honestly, like, just super fucking adorable, man. She, like, she yeah. lets her, she lets her freak flag fly, and she's, you know, not afraid of it, but of course, because she's so weird, she's got a lot of insecurities about said weirdness, which again, we'll address more in the spoiler section, when we go into more, like, char individual character backstories. But, too. but just as a, just as a thing to, like, tell you about her extra, eccentricities, she, um, all of her clothes, she's either thrifted or made. Or, mod or like, uh, like Brian said, like, modified it 
like with like a thrift store stuff. Um, mm-hmm. one, one of the coolest things that she did was uh, the, the sweater she makes like towards the finale where it had, or, or it's like Christmas tree themed and she has like legit like working Christmas lights on it. That's fucking dope. Mm-hmm. It, it was pretty awesome. Uh, but yeah, she has a very unique style and personality. And like I said, she is just so goddamn precious, man. Like indeed so so cute like i I was i was rooting for her more than dash at points to be honest but i mean that that dash is definitely a good kid um in indeed uh but yeah that's really all we can tell you without really going into spoilers because there isn't much i will say mm -hmm. i will say that uh that uh we talked about dash and his friends Lily doesn't really have too many friends. She has some adult friends. Yeah, she yeah and... her, her, she has a caroling troop. That, yeah, those are her adult friends, and she has her aunt slash godmother, and... her great aunt slash godmother, and her brother uh, Langston. Who uh, I don't know about you, but very much in the way that he acted and looked reminded me a lot of Tyler Hecklin. I could totally see that. Um, he uh, he gave me big. I mean, you I don't, you've never seen it, but like anyone who like uh, grew up in like the Degrassi era, he gave me like big ass Marco vibes. Um, <laughs> but yeah, but... Um, definitely he was cool too. Uh, so yeah, really not much we can tell you with uh, without going into spoilers. Honestly, like you know, don't expect anything deep. Or like nuance, it, it you know it, it follows the pattern that you know with these types of things. But that's not necessarily a bad thing, right? Like it's a nice, comfy show. There aren't like twists that make you go. <gasps> I mean, there's some things that I'm just like, oh, they didn't do that. It's nice, but there aren't. There's nothing like groundbreaking about it. But it's a and... really sweet and good show. And both Brian and I admitted to each other, like towards the end, we both got a little choked up because we got invested. Yeah. Yep, and uh, it's it's a very lighthearted show, and uh, like you said, there are some twists and turns where you're like, oh, okay, so this is a rom com, so this character is gonna be like this, like and this. Then yep. Mm. They're like, no, swerve you here, swerve yeah, no, you there. No, nice swerves, but like nothing like that, that made you go, oh, didn't expect that. Or I'm like, oh, nice, cool. There was a little bit of mystery involved, and also one other thing that we can say that I thought was really cool is uh, several times in the show, we'd have a situation where we'd see it from one of their perspective, and then partway during the episode, we stuck we stop and then we rewind and yeah, see and then from those the other events from and, yeah. I really like that. Yes. They did that a lot towards the end, and I, I like that a lot. Like that, that uh, like perspective flip. And oh. uh, by the way, just side note. Mm-hmm. Fred Savage, damn, with the directing, right? He was re- this show is really well put together. Um, he he directed for half of the show. Nice, and it was really good. Oh yeah, no, one hundred percent. I really enjoyed the show. I uh, highly recommend it, you guys. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, if you're looking for something cozy to watch for the holiday season, or you know, just want something light and fluffy, because you know there isn't much TV going on right now, and you know times are pretty heavy outside. So uh, if you need something, something to make you feel good during times that might not be so good, this is definitely a show to watch. We definitely, definitely need good, some comfort TV. Mm-hmm. And a good turn off your brain type show. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I I've I've been I've been really busy this week, so I needed something to really like shut down and just relax and feel feel warm and fuzzy and nice. So definitely was needed for me. Um but yeah, so we've reached our normal fifteen minute mark for the non spoiler section, so Rat, rat, rat. Definitely go alert. check out 
Dash and Lily, it's only eight episodes long, and those episodes are only 30 minutes, so it'll only take about four hours of your time if you just sit down and watch the whole thing all the way through. So, not too mm. much of a commitment, so I highly recommend it. It gets this Channel Chaser stamp of approval for sure, uh, but let's just jump right into it. All right, so who should we start with first, Dash or Lily? Well, I mean, the show starts with Dash, so... All right, well, yeah, let's go ahead and start with Dash. One thing that I, I do like that they did in the beginning a lot with, uh, was with uh, this little small thing with the title card in the first couple episodes when, like, it would be, like, Dash and Lily, and then, like, you know, if the, if the episode focused on Dash, the Lily part would fade away and it would just be, like, Dash. And then... Well, it it's also because that specific episode was titled dash oh got you mm-hmm. and the and the other one was specifically titled lily okay that makes a lot more sense but yeah it's still pretty cool so like i said before dash is kind of your typical angsty emo teenager he's the uh, like the bah humbuggy protagonist of our christmas rom-com uh, played by austin abram he's he's very to put it in like tv terms he's very jugheadish. Mm-hmm. Very, he's very jugheadish. Uh, for anyone who's watched Riverdale, you know exactly what that means. Um, but yeah, and he's very like uh, jaded and has. Cyn- yeah, and he's cynical. He's very cynical. Um, definitely has like been through some shit. For sure, um, both with his parents and an ex. Although, like, I'm I'm kind of upset we don't ever get anything with his mom. Well, um, that just means maybe we'll address it in the future. Oh, you think this could be a, this this could get another season? I feel like this was a one and done. Well, the director himself had said that uh, that uh, he can do more if. Netflix wants him to. Uh, oh, that's cool. Da- Dash and Lily. Dash mm-hmm. and Lily's... Uh, whatever I said. Book of Dares. Book of Dares. Mm-hmm. Is... Is uh, so far... A trilogy of books. Oh, okay. So they got more material. That's dope. And... Yeah, no, uh, I mean... And... Fun mm-hmm. fact. They... It's written by two people, and the two authors were not only on set, but they were writing the third book while on set. Oh, that's awesome! I I really like uh, I really like um, Netflix's um, recent like book to series or movie adaptation. Honestly, I'm glad this wasn't turned into a movie like the you know to all the boys books. Because I feel like this one needed more time, mm-hmm. and uh, this, I don't think the story could have been condensed into like an hour and a half. I, I do like that it was spread out. Yeah, because because it's only in like the like what sixth or seventh episode where he says that I'm tired of playing games because with something like this, you need to give it time. Yeah, for them to do and, the back and forth dares and stuff, and, and with the and with the seer, and it also like gave us more time to like you know endear ourselves to the characters individually and build up their chemistry. Not to say that chemistry isn't built up properly in movies like the to all the boys of movies, but like I feel like because you're only dealing with you know them in like the simple high school setting, you don't really need to like dedicate a lot of like spare time to smaller moments uh because like they have the like the one setting that they all all interact in with this show it literally spans the whole ass city (laughs) Mm -hmm. so i mean well not the whole ass city just but manhattan's pretty fucking huge um indeed so yeah, they they needed a lot of a lot of time to do this. I'm glad they did because, like, again, you got to have smaller moments with like the side characters, like you know Langston, like Boomer, 
uh, like even Sophia and stuff like that, which we'll talk about with Dash. Okay, so Dash, at first, he's just kind of intrigued by this, like, whole dare thing, right? Because that just seems like the type of person he is. He's like, all right, I'll, fuck it, I'll do it. Um, and uh, one of the one of the like first things in this set of instructions is to like do a dramatic reading of that one like sad Christmas song that that the I forget what the lady's name is, but she's the one that ha- has all those like really sad sounding slow songs. You know, you know <laughs> what I'm talking about. It's not Sarah McLaughlin. No, 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 it's not Sarah McLaughlin. But they have very similar like style. A very similar style of music. Yeah, because I but you know, know what I'm talking about. I know that Sarah McLaughlin is yeah, the one yeah. who does the the arms the of an angel, yeah, mm-hmm. dog commercial thing. Yep, and also uh, like, but the, the, this lady was the same one who it's Carol something. I know it's Carol something because Family Guy made an episode about like Stewie getting obsessed with her music and constantly crying. Um, I just don't remember her fucking name. Anyways, so he does a dramatic reading of this sad-ass Christmas song, and he's just like, all right, now I'm really intrigued. Who is this chick? Is she actually going to respond? And, uh, you know, lo and behold, she actually does. And uh, we get, like, a whole series of dares where, like, um, you know, he has to have an interaction with a mall Santa and, like, get her name out of his hat. Um, which is really funny because, like, you know, obviously, like, he's a super, like, not anti-holiday, but, like, a bah humbug character. So he's just like, I'm not sitting on your lap to get this girl's name. Just tell me your name. And he's just like, it's up here. And he goes, oh, it's in your head? And he goes, no, it's in my hat. <laughs> he goes, all right, bet. He snatches the hat and dips. And then gets, Cause, like, cause he, escorted because by security. Apparently, the, uh, the mall Santa knows Lily, and yeah, because because Lily's grandpa is like one of the most connected people I've ever met. Like he well, has so many different connects. Well, also her family. She has such a big connect family. Yeah, her family is pretty. He, her family is pretty huge. Because I believe yeah, her... the mall the mall Santa is one of her uncles. Yep, the mall Santa is one of her uncles. The guy who works at the bookstore is her cousin. Yeah, her yeah, her family's pretty huge. So and, like, I be- and I believe the the living statue was another uncle. Yep. But and... yeah, so so like they end up exchanging dares back and forth. Uh and it's really interesting and this makes a lot of sense. I guess because like it's kind of it's kind of a blank slate situation. You know, obviously, they, you know, neither of them know each other. So they, they are a lot more open to, like, talking about shit that they wouldn't talk about to people that they know. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, you know, uh, eventually, uh, Lily, because he does end up finding her name pretty early because she tells him, her, uh, like, he gets the name from the hat. Eventually, Lily tells Dash, and she, she asks him, she goes, so what was your best Christmas experience? You've got to have at least one. And so then Dash you know, goes on to tell a story. He goes, yeah, you know, when I was 10 years old, um, my parents sat me down and told me we were going to have two Christmases, two trees, two sets of presents, two everything. And then they told me they were getting a divorce. And I was just like, oh, dang. Okay, so we're going here. Uh, and then, yeah, uh, then he, uh, so obviously he- after that, Oh, yeah, no, go ahead, Brian, you were going to say uh, I was just going to say, we can go into it with her, but he then is like, I told you my best, now tell me your worst. Yeah, we'll get into um, that with yeah, her. Yeah, we'll get into that when we get to Lily, but yeah, so, and after that, like, I guess, like, revealing his own childhood trauma just made him feel a lot more comfortable with Lily, and again, he start, like, starts to develop feelings for her, you know, slowly but surely, as he's completing these dares and like getting to know her vicariously I, through people and all that stuff. And I love it that one moment where uh where she tells her story and uh he writes down something and then he's like, No, 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 that's too 
that's too like alpha male clingy scratch that I can't tell her how I want to beat up that dude and it's just like it was really cute also the the dare with the mochi yep also he does recognize the name of her bully um but he doesn't tell her that well he Does he? Um, he does. He recognizes the name, and he's like, "But, but, you know, it's a common name." So he's like, "There's no way it could be the same dude I know." Like, yeah, because he knows him by a nickname. Yeah, but um, you know, he know, but he also knows that that's his actual name. He's just like, "There's no fucking way. It's not the same guy." There's what are the fucking what are the odds? Um, but, but anyway, um, so. Eventually, it gets to the point where he's just like, yeah, you know, the, you know, things are going better. He's actually, like, more open and honest to people, and he's, you know, more outwardly nice. And his best friend, Boomer, like, actually does end up meeting Lily because she, you know, drops off the notebook and stuff, and he, like, chases her down and is like, hey, notebook girl! Which, that twist actually did get me. I did not see that coming. Yeah, neither did I. Uh, but like, I think it's really cool because you know she's like, look, 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 you gotta, you gotta preserve the integrity of the game, man. Like, don't tell them you saw me. Don't tell them you know what I look like. Uh, we we gotta meet each other up, uh, meet up with each other on our own time. And and Boomer's like, I haven't seen him like this in a while. So, so. you know, I, I'm a, I'm gonna hold you down. I'm gonna keep your secret. No worries. Um. And so uh, she and he ends up becoming her like unofficial go between uh, with her and Dash because you know she he's the one person that he knows uh, like she knows that uh, she can uh, get in touch with Dash as quickly as possible if she does need to like drop off something so that's really cool um, and also uh, going back to the whole Mochi thing the mm-hmm. lesson that he learns from. Finding his inner mochi and uh, calming down actually helps him with dealing with his father. Yep. Instead of like, because he has a short temper and he has he's kind of quick to just uh, whenever he gets angry to just storm off and say, "Now nah, fuck this, I'm out." Especially but, when like, it comes to his dad. Yep. And because uh, we of, find we find out that. All of Dash's bad Christmases like are and, spent with his dad and whatever and new his, girlfriend he has this year, and all of his bad habits and uh, bad attitude stuff he like inherited from his father. Yep. So that's pretty interesting. Um, one 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 thing that I, one thing that I really liked uh it about just both of them in general is that uh kind of what they do for each other. Because uh, so like like uh, like we said earlier with Dash, uh, Dash, um, he needs to learn to like calm down and also just open up, not to keep everything just to himself. And you know he definitely learned that thanks to Lily, um, and he uh, because of that he was able to better interact with his friends and actually you know form real friendships with his friends um, that aren't Boomer, which is uh, you know that was pretty cool. Um, and yeah, then, and you know, that was a cool well, moment where Boomer was like, it, 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 he was like, what are you doing here? And he, Boomer's like, dude, you're not my only friend. Yeah, he goes, are you just hanging out with everybody else, Everybody that I know? He goes, dude, I have other friends than you. <laughs> yeah, no, that, was a, that was a funny moment. Um, but yeah, so I get this will, tra- you know, obviously this will segue into our talk with Lily. But what Dash teaches Lily is to, ha- you know, come out of her shell more, interact with more people, um, you know, but also she learns that it's okay to not be happy all the time. Like, it's kind of like the, like the, in- the, the lesson that, um, you, that you learn in- well, after watching Inside Out, which is funny because a Pixar movie, like, comes into play <laughs> for, mm-hmm. the, for the, um, the plot of this movie. But um, it's like the plot of Inside Out. Uh, 
Lily learns that like it's okay to be sad. It's okay to be angry. It's okay to smash things every once in a while just to just to let out your frustration. And as uh, Demi Lovato says, it's okay not to be okay. Yeah, exactly. Uh, just you know, try not to murder an entire family of snowmen. Like they they didn't. Yeah. That. <laughs> but yeah. Um, so Lily, let's talk about Lily. Um, man, she uh, so Dash obviously had some character development, but I think Lily had the more substantial character development, in my opinion. I don't know. Yeah, what, I, I was gonna say I don't know what your opinion is on it, Brian, but I definitely think uh, Dash just needed to realize that the relationship that he had with his girl was not completely her fault. Why they ended. And that he needed to open up more. Lily and had all, to like learn to be like a completely new person. Yeah, she she had to completely like change. Dash's character development is a lot more subtle and nuanced, whereas Lily's was just like yeah, she had to do a complete one eighty, but not in a like Sandy from Greece kind of way, um, but more like just kind of be more outgoing and not just run away from like things that might scare you or make you feel like you're going to get singled out. Um, yeah. I for example, this... mm -hmm. I was just going to say, I forgot where this is from, but as the saying says, let your freak flag fly. Yeah, exactly. Um, and one of the, one of the best episodes and best dares that kind of exemplifies this is, you know, Dash is trying to figure out, okay, what should my next dare be? What should my next dare be? And he's chilling in Boomer's pizza shop. And then these two dudes uh, come up. They're, they're kind of they're, they're dressed all punky. And then he, he sees they're putting up flyers in the pizza shop of this Jewcore show for Hanukkah. And he's just like, the hell? Jewcore? It's, well, oh, it's like a... apparently, apparently from what I, what I took from that scene was that Boomer and... Boomer and Dash knew these guys. Mm -hmm. And he's like, you, because even Boomer was like, you guys are playing a show? <gasps> a uh, oh, yeah, that, show? Oh, yeah, that, oh, yeah, that's right. Because they did show up, they were there at the concert at the end. So, yeah, that does make sense that they're also friends. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, uh, so he's like, okay, you guys are doing the show. That's pretty dope. And then, like, they get all excited when Dash takes the flyers. Like, dude, are you coming? He goes, no, I'm not going. And he goes, I think this is the perfect opportunity for Lily to finally come out of her, uh, you know, come out of her shell a little bit. And probably, like, one of the sweetest things and one of the biggest uh, early signs of Dash's character development is before the show starts, he meets up with his boys and he leaves a little message in the bathroom mirror for Lily to just hang in there and get back out there. You can do it. Like, I thought that was really Yeah, right dope. in the bathroom mirror. And uh, we don't find this out until she looks up and sees it after she has her first initial freak out, mm -hmm. which was really cool and also leads to like a really like sad moment, too, where we find out that. Yeah, the source wrote... of her. Yeah, we, we find out the source of her trauma as well. Well, I was just going to say real quick before we go into mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. uh, before she ran out to do that. Uh, she actually put in the uh the wrote on the scared. mirror. Yeah. But I'm scared. And later in the episode, later in the show, he's like he sees that and starts freaking out like, oh fuck, what did yeah, I do? I, yeah, what did I, I, I do? I, I, it's like, oh shit, I pushed her too far, I pushed her too far. Oh damn, no 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 no. Uh but yeah, we also just like with Dash and kind of find out trauma uh pretty early on we later we find out what the uh, you know where lily's self-esteem issues come from her worst uh, christmas which uh you know for like most of us happens in middle school because middle school sucks uh, it, it's when kids are at their meanest man i hated middle school personally i mean i i know you you probably didn't have like the the, the regular like middle school experience but trust me middle well, school well uh, half my middle school was being homeschooled so uh oh uh, yeah so yeah middle but trust me middle school sucks 
<laughs> Anyways, so basically, uh, young Lily figures out like no, she's like not figures out, but she like musters up the courage to basically tell this boy that she likes that she likes him. Well, um. Not completely how it happens, if you don't mind me saying. Okay. Uh, she learned from the awesome aunt that she's named after, great aunt, that uh, it's better to build things because it's more personal and all that. So she decides to give friendship bracelets to all the kids in her school and the boy that she's been crushing on for a very long time actually walks up to her and says, so where's mine? And she's like, oh God, I'm finally accepted. I'm finally, maybe he likes me in return. And then she sees all the friendship bracelets on the ground. And then he and... laughs. And then he proceeds to laugh and weird. And obviously that traumatized her um mm -hmm. and uh so like ever since then she's just been afraid to really uh interact with uh, other people her age because she's like been scared of the rejection as you know a lot of people are because you know it, it sucks um and uh, yeah that, that's why she's so sheltered and why like the only friends that she had she has to her and or older than her Mm -hmm. Which, by the way, f friends being older than her leads to funny moments. Oh yeah, one of yeah one of the. Actually, let's let's quickly talk about her middle school bully Edgar. Uh, just I want I, I want to throw some hate his way real quick because fuck that guy. Oh God, Edgar. Yeah, fuck that guy. Um, which uh, by the way, in uh, in. All fairness, I thought that they were going to go rom-com, like, full-on make him a villain, douchebag type oh, yeah. character. No, I mean, he, he's still a douchebag, but he's not a villain. He does genuinely apologize for, like, being a little shit back then. And, because... his, and his biggest thing, his biggest issue, is that he is undoubtedly a dude bro. Yep. And also, he, he admits it to her, like, you know, in person when he's just like, yeah, I, I wish I could have, you know, I was so jealous of you back then because I, I couldn't be like you. I couldn't be myself. You know, I had to, I had to put up this whole, this whole, whole like, front my entire shit. I mean, I still do. Um, but, but, like, but also, at the party, he makes her Get her own Uber. Yeah, what a yeah, what a dick move. Like he invites her to the party and then tells her to go home like on her own. Like, dude. And uh, sees that she's visibly drunk and still kisses her. Yep. Mm hmm That was nope, nope. Big old red flag is there, buddy. Uh, but yeah, the only the only way that you kiss or more it's with drunk. yeah, no, that's, yes, it's kind of it's kind of just like that should be everybody's basic rule of common decency. You don't kiss a drunk person if you are equally as drunk as that person. Yes, um, but yeah. I just wanted to quick and and uh, while we're quickly addressing him, I would look. Uh, I would just want to quickly mention that I love his like comeuppance at the end, where oh. uh, where uh, he's been hitting on uh, Lily's more like punkish friend in the Carol group, and it goes to midnight. And then we see a lady walk up here and is like, oh, hey, babe. And yep. kisses her right in front of him. Where... Yeah, I thought that and... was great. Yeah. Um, 
but yeah, uh, so the uh, last thing I want to talk about with Lily before we get into like kind of like, like a meetup between the two um, is uh, her brother and her grandpa. So her brother Langston, um, he's, he, well, one thing, he's gay. But but something that I definitely want to bring up because you know this is this is just rare to do in general and I'm glad this is more common now. Uh, I'm glad that being gay wasn't just his whole character. No, and uh, I can tell you what was probably a factor in that. Okay. One of the executive producers for the show, mm-hmm. Sean Levy. Oh, nice. And uh, also, uh, a certain somebody that we'll bring up later is also an executive producer. Nice. Cool. The the uh, celebrity guest star. Oh, really? Yes. Nice. That's awesome. Didn't know he was into that. Didn't know he, like, did, uh, like, behind the scenes. Interesting. I think he's just now like a uh, like Selena. I think he's now starting to get into Production? producing YA okay. stuff. That's cool. That's really cool. Like that. He was always my favorite. We'll get there. Um. But yeah. So, uh, moving along. Uh, yeah. Let's talk quickly about like her grandpa, her aunt, and. Yeah, her grandpa and her aunt. So this is really interesting because uh, one of the, like, kind of underlying ongoing conflicts, like, that we know that she loves her great aunt, but for some reason, her grandpa and her great aunt have some kind of, like, unspoken beef. And it's just like, all right, some there's, that's some interesting tension here. Wonder how this is going to get resolved. And eventually, after, like, some crazy, like, reveal... No, well, not, like, crazy reveals, but kind of dick move reveals, really. Her parents spring on her that they're moving to Fiji, um, like, after... Well, um, it's not just that, because uh, they're not the initial ones that reveal it. Yeah, it's uh, Langston. Uh, Langston. Langston does it because... uh. He breaks up with his boyfriend for a very stupid reason. Yeah, just because his boyfriend's going to Puerto Rico. Dude, it's not that it's not a big deal. It's two weeks. Because even Lily thought that he was moving to Puerto Rico. Yep. It's just like, no, he's just going there for two weeks. Then just don't talk to him for two weeks. Relax. Or you can text back and forth. Uh, actually, Do whatever. actually, that's probably more extensive, depending on your phone bill. Uh, but true, true, true. My bad. But there's still email. Yeah, email's free. There, there, there are other ways. You don't have to text. There, are, but there are other ways. You live in the age of technology. There is no excuse for somebody. Any uh, fallouts? You can go old school with writing letters. Yep. Uh, but yeah. But... So. It's only two weeks, and uh, out and he goes, you know, oh, why? Why do you think, uh, you know, you know, we're, well, I'm not the only one who's gonna have a shitty Christmas, blah 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 blah. He, and then he drops the bomb about their parents moving to Fiji, like them taking her with them because she's not an adult and she has to finish high school, and then, you know, that really fucks her, you know, her plans up, and then eventually. Uh, this is where we'll transition into kind of like the, the shared portion. So now we'll transfer back to Dash real quick. So uh, eventually, Dash ends up meeting back up with his ex, Sophia, who's like super pretty, really nice, uh, very like worldly. You can tell that she's pretty, uh, she's very well traveled. She speaks several languages. Because her parents, her dad is always stationed in a new country. Yep. So that, so, you know, she, so, you know, you, 
you initially think that she's she is your typical like female rival rom com rival who's like the super pretty perfect one that's kind of a bitch. But no, actually, one of the little swords, she turns out to be re- like a genuinely nice person. <laughs> yeah, like, uh, I genuinely, by the end, liked her, just didn't think that she was and right I, for. Yeah, and I was, I was super happy about what the end result, how she ended up with Boomer. And I'm just like, oh, nice. You deserved it, my man. Yeah. Well, it was nice. But yeah, no, because uh, like, you know, when when she first comes back, she's just like, you know, uh, da- Dash is about to meet up with his dad again, and he's just like, well, shit. You know, when, so- like, when Sophia was around, she could eat, help, really help me out with, uh, you know, diffusing the tension. So, maybe I'll just hit her up. And so, she comes through, she helps out, but then she also, but then like after they're like when she when she sees the dash is actually able to have a conversation with his dad and not just blow up, she's just like, "Yo, what's up, man? Like, I've never seen this side of you. You're actually like calm and able to talk to people. It's just nice." She's like, "You've you definitely changed a little bit, but this is definitely for the better. I'm I'm happy for you." And then and she's like, like, and then she's like, "I'm." Because we later find this out, because she admits it herself that uh, she's in a vulnerable state herself, and she sees that her ex boyfriend is doing well and is better. Yep. At doing better, so she's like, uh, "I'm scared about what's going on in my life, and I could use some security." And he seems to be in a good place, so. Uh, why don't we get back together? Yeah, so she, she so she clings for a little bit, and like their relationship is kind of, is one of those ones that like, you know, we've all seen before on TV. Uh, you know, some of us might have actually been in a situation like this where like you have she's she's the type of girlfriend that like has good intentions to help you, but. Because of that, she ends up like coming off as a little bit more controlling than she intends to be. Like she'll like answer mm-hmm. questions for him and like you know make decisions and stuff like that. Which, which is cool because I like that her friend actually acknowledged that. Because, because she asked Dash for some help with a lit project in college. And she speaks for him, and she's like, "Wow, well, thank you, Dash." Yep. And it's like, "Hey, so you're not the stereotypical, so you're not the stereotypical stand by your girl type rom com." Yeah, I, 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 I also really appreciated that small little exchange too. Uh, but yeah, so eventually. Um, his other friend, Priya, who is friends with his ex, invites Dash to the Christmas party. Well, she invites him pretty early on, but, like, she invites him again after she sees that they're kind of there. And, um, and then Dash is, uh, well, I mean, she kind of says yes for them, and he's just like, okay, I guess, I guess now I'm going. And so he ends up going to the party, um, and then Boomer finds out because Boomer initially was just gonna go to go right, just to just to say hi and stuff to his other friends, and then you know he shows up early just to say hi to like Priya or whatever, and then he sees, oh hey Dash, Fia, hey Dash, can I, can I talk to you for a second? And so you know he sits his boy down and he's like, hey hey yo, uh. You know what's going on, right? Like, what about Lily? And then it just, and then you know, Dash is kind of like, I know, but like, with Sophia, it's familiar, it's safe. I I know what this is about. But besides, we're not together. We're just friends right now. It's like, and then, you know, of course, Boomer, being his friend, is just like, yeah, okay, all right, just just keep that. 
Like, don't, don't, don't do don't do anything stupid. Lily makes you happy. Like you should go for it. Which which does lead to a cool moment where uh, they do again. I hate to sound like a broken record, but the typical rom com thing where you see the two, where you see him and him and Sophia making out, and they pan away. Which usually rom com, yeah, that means yeah they're about they they had sex, but then we actually cut back yeah to back that to scene it later and, yeah, on. And, and then yeah you see that Daph pulls away after and he's like no this doesn't feel right I'm sorry um and, and then he you know he explains the situation well first let, let's 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 do ourselves a favor and rewind again because later we find out that Edgar invites. Lily to the same party. Um, and so this is the party that they went to where at the end of it, Edgar makes Lily call her on Uber. But anyway, so they meet each other um, un- uh, unbeknownst to the other um, and they end up like hitting it off and connecting because, you know, her cool weird sweater and uh, she likes her snarky comments about Home Alone 2 which I've talked about just on a personal note in personal rants my entire life that movie makes no sense there's no way that kid could have made it to those locations on foot logistically however that's why the second one goes in the trash um but but it wasn't just his comment on the second one it was the fact that he knew that he would be overwritten by everyone. So he makes that comment, but he's like, but oh well, let's just go ahead and watch the second one. Yep. And then not only do they, because this is like, what, episode six? Yeah, I want to say it's or no seven. Idea. Seven, seven, is the, uh, seven is the one where she gets drunk, where like Lily gets drunk after realizing who Because it's a Christmas Eve party, and Six is Christmas Eve, seven is Christmas, and eight is New Year's. Yep. So it's the sixth episode, and we've had this back and forth between these two characters this whole entire time. And honestly, I don't know about you, but I was starting to get worried that their, chemi- about I, the that fact- their chemistry in person wasn't going to be as good. Yeah, no, no. I definitely feel... A little- but it, it immediately was, and they even make an un comfortable but really funny like side note about his pants yep also just just, just a, like a really quick like a little personal side note like i i just because like personally just to give you guys a little personal note um like I met my girl off of Tinder and like for a long time because she was super shy and not as comfortable with like video chatting and stuff because she has her own little, you know, she has her own, you know, self-esteem problems. Uh, Most of our relationship was via text until she got comfortable with FaceTiming. And so like I, I definitely kind of relate to the like the whole anxiety of like, oh shit, what what am I going to, what am I going to talk about with, about for like literally entire days, entire nights like via text message what do I say to them in person? But then like you know, when you actually meet them, it's just like, oh no no this is, this is, this is easy this is the easiest thing I've ever done in my life um, so yeah, I, I totally like, I've, I'm not gonna lie, this, this, this definitely added to it a little bit, I was just like, oh I, I, I get this, I get this a lot and it also had a, it also had a note though, because they were vibing with each other mm-hmm. And not knowing that they were each other, yeah, yeah, because because yeah, he had yeah, by the yeah, end of it, he he gives her his name, and then, he gives her his name, and then he gets but, pull, and then he gets pulled away by Sophia, and then right as she gets right as he gets pulled away by Sophia, and like she, uh, you know, she puts two and two together because she because the only well, hint she doesn't tell later. No, she, but, she she does after he. No, uh, I thought it was uh, like uh, shortly after. Like, no, it it was at it was after uh. It was after uh. Older Lily. Messed up. And said, and said off with the he was off with the dash. 
pun uh, not intended. Oh, oh, you're right. You're right. You're right. When she 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 only figures it out when uh when she's when she's uh looking for the notebook. He's supposed to give her his name as a Christmas present. And she, um, it's like, oh, it's not here yet, but I'll, I'll dash it to you. Uh, I'll dash it to you as soon as I can. Uh, no pun intended. Because the only clue he had given t- up to his name up until then is that um, his name is a connector of words, which is really clever, he, actually. Like, Yeah, because he, he initially told her that he didn't want to give her his name. Because his name is, because super, his it, name... is super distinct. Like, it's it would be way too yes. easy. Yeah. But so for this whole entire time, he knew her name, but she didn't know his. So when they meet in person, he gives his name, but she doesn't give hers. So it's like a missing each other type yeah, yeah. thing. It's very much so. Um, and it, it, it's really sweet. Um, once she realizes, uh, like, after the, uh, like, you know, because you know, Christmas like so it's Christmas the party is Christmas Eve. She didn't really have a good time. She's feeling sad about it, but she's super excited because, you know, the next day, Christmas morning, she's gonna get like the notebook back and she's gonna finally know his name. And, you know, um she also left like a message saying, you know, fi- we should finally meet uh meet up and, you know, finally get to know each other face to face. And so it's like this is it. Mm-hmm. This is finally the time. And then she realizes, like, after her great aunt, uh, you know, makes that pun, this dash, and then, like, it clicks in her head. Ooh, that super pretty girl. Oh, no. So he, he did. Because, yeah. because he for, he forgot to give her the notebook because he spent the night in a non Yeah, yeah. Romantic yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Way. So, yeah, we'll talk, we'll talk about that in a second. Um, um, yeah, so basically, and then I, I thought she gets pissed I, about. I, that I thought I thought this was really fact- I thought this was really clever because like when she figures it out, uh, because the whole time she was kind of like suspicious because um, in one of his messages in a notebook he's like, oh yeah, no, I'm just hanging out with an old friend. Um, old friend, what that actually what that means usually, um, and so which uh, going to show the like kind of sweet being that she is when she talks about with his brother she's like no he's just talking to a friend who happens to be old because she's like I hang out with friends who are older and and then uh and and then he just looks at her and she's like oh you're right and, and then like so out of paranoia she hits up boomer uh which I thought this was hilarious because she facetimes him and she and he's like get my number he goes, oh, I called the pizza shop and told your parents that I was your girlfriend in the army and I wanted to send you a special message for Christmas. And he goes, that worked? She goes, well, I called you, didn't I? And he's like, oh. He goes, because because uh, she, u- she used uh, that mommy app thing that they kept using in this where it's like a coalition of mommies. Mm-hmm. Because that's how he finds her. Eventually, wait, wait, did, she, did, like, oh, did she use that app? I know he did with the boo. Yes. Oh, I didn't. I didn't notice that. That's how she found Boomer's number. Oh, okay. Well, she went to the mommy app and told them that he was a soldier coming back. Oh, got you, got you. Okay, I I thought she had just straight up hit up the her, like his parents' pizza place and the okay. That's what I, I feel like his parents would have had something to say about that. Okay. Yeah, that does make more sense. Okay, so anyways, so she asked him, she goes, hey, so was Notebook Boy at a party last night for a, a friend named uh, Priya? And he goes, you know, I can't tell you that. That's breaking your rules, right? And he goes, she goes, come on, you got to tell me because if it is him... He left with he left the party with his ex, and then like that litter uh, that the that that and like completely was just like broke it because he goes he did what? Um, and then she goes yeah, which was also funny because earlier she actually says uh, 
brings up his yeah, name. Yeah, yeah. She goes, Dash. Dash. she's like your friend Dash. He goes, "Oh, he told you his name," and it's just like, "Oh, but I just did." <laughs> yeah. Oh, that was great. Um, so yeah, so now we are so obviously she's all broken up about it. Uh, so much so that like when her adult friends are hanging out at a bar after caroling, um, which they invite her to, uh, she starts to spit hard out about like notebook, uh, like what happened with notebook boy. Now he had a girlfriend, and and one of them is like. Drink. Oh, you! And I love it. They say, Here, and they just give it to her, and then she, uh, she like goes around the well, table. It's... Well, it's. Well, no, well, yeah. So one person offers her drink, her a drink, and then she takes it. And she goes, "Ugh, no!" And then she just goes around the table. Nope, nope, nope. And then gets to the last one. Huh? This tastes like candy canes. What is this? Peppermint schnapps. Which, by the way, um, and that turns out to be the gay friend, and uh, she then downs the whole thing more and more, and then gets super toasted. Um, and I and I want it though because she's at at what point when she's toasted before before like plot actually starts happening, and she texts the guy. She's like. After she texts the guy, she's like, "Okay, I'll get you one." And I'm like, "You're under Yeah, eight. exactly. How are you gonna get this exactly? One? Um, yeah. And then she like, in her drunk state, she ends up seeing Dad. She goes, "How are you even here? I didn't what." And he goes, "You texted me, weirdo." And he goes, "But I don't even have your number." <laughs> and it turns out to be Edgar. And then you know, um. The kiss happens, and of course, cliche rom com thing. Uh, rewind again. So we cut back. Dash makes out with uh, Sophia for a little bit at the museum, which set up for on Sophia's part because she knows like mm-hmm. he's really big into history and literature, and there's a big exhibit at the um, you know Natural History Museum. Uh, she pulls him and. She pulls some strings, and also the nest. Uh huh. Sorry. She. I was gonna say she just pulled. She pulls some strings because uh, uh, apparently, like her dad knows somebody who works at security, so like he left it unlocked for them. And also, uh, I don't know if you caught this or not, mm-hmm. but she also said that that was where he took her for their first yep. date. But but he said you know this would be a lot better if it wasn't so crowded with people. And so, you know, she she pulled a really sweet move and like, you know, they, they start to make out and then like we said, Dash pulls away and he says, you know, this doesn't feel right. He talks about Lily and how Lily makes her feel and stuff like that. And she just says, oh, okay. Then it's fine. Uh, but, you know, we're kind of stuck here. So why don't we just here as friends? When do you get the night to and when do you get the chance to spend the night in a museum on Christmas yep. Eve? Well let's do it and let's do it as friends. Because you can cuddle with friends. There's nothing wrong with cuddling with friends. Especially if it's cold out. Also also you notice you notice that uh he gave her his coat as a blanket yep. and then he slept on yep. the floor. Although I still feel like you could have gotten away with a friend. Well, I don't know. I I I I've cuddled with friends before. It's super, dude. If it's cold, if it's I'm cuddle with my guy friends. I I I I have a hard time retaining body heat, sir. I'm I'm definitely gonna cuddle with whoever's near. Um. But yeah, well, just not not everyone would be will be cool with that. Well, I, I, I mean, I always ask for consent, Brian. I don't just cuddle without consent. No, I mean, I'm not, I mean, not all significant others would be. Yeah, no, I, I, that's all, again, that's also a consent thing. I, I, I would, I would make sure it's cool first. Uh, but if anything, okay. <laughs> but if anything, like push comes to shove, then I'll just cuddle with a. 
I'm cool with that too. If you're uncomfortable with me cuddling with a female friend, I'll cuddle with a guy friend. I'm cold, man. <laughs> um, listen, but New, anyway. York, New, New York winters are no joke. No joke. I, I, w- I would not be playing around. But yeah, so uh, he, you know, wakes up late and so he doesn't get to deliver the notebook in time on Christmas morning. And uh, also, um, Lily gets into deep shit because, of course, she does. She got drunk underage. And uh, well, not only that, but uh, but initially, Dash thinks, "Okay, what am I gonna do with her?" Takes her to the cool aunt, but unfortunately, it's right at the time that. She told Grandpa that she'd be home. Well, I, and thirty minutes. She's thirty minutes late from when Grandpa said she'd be home from her aunt's house. And knock, knock, knock. Who was at the aunt's house door? Grandpa. It, Which and this also leads to something very interesting that they don't touch on. That I definitely think they will in a, uh, a second season if they get one. It it's very odd that like Grandpa or somebody in their family had like an alcohol problem. Yeah, because I don't think we, f- and also I don't think we fully get the story behind why the aunt grandpa... and the grandpa have beef. Yeah, yeah. yeah why well, grandpa and his sister have beef? Yeah, no, they reconcile, but we don't ever get the backstory. Yeah, and also, um, at that moment, the great aunt is just like, "Look, kid." I try to help you when I can, but there is no way of getting around this. And yeah, but... even when, and even Lily in her drunken state, when she tries to attack the grandpa, she's like, don't dig the hole deeper. Yep. And, and you could tell with the aunt, it's like, especially not with this. So, like, I definitely think grandpa used to have a drinking problem. Like, Well, also, one other thing that we don't really see is, uh, we don't see or hear about Dash's mom. We don't see or hear about Lily's grandma. Yep. We just hear that gra- we just hear that grandpa has like a new girlfriend in Florida somewhere. So that's that's interesting. Yeah, so after that like uh th- things Dash realizes, well Fuck, I fucked up. I fucked up. I should have, you know, I should have talked. I should have waited. I should have talked to her. What the fuck am I going to do? Um, and then, you know, it gets the close to The mommy app rings on his phone. Yep. And Like, you've been looking for a girl with, girl with one red boot at this bar. Yep. So he, so he runs over there. With the you know the notebook present and the other boot, and lo and behold, rom com timing, it's when she gets it starts making drunkenly making out with Edgar, and that of course deflates all his confidence. He was so excited. He bought tickets to the the Pixar movie. He was getting ready. He was he hugged Santa. He was saying he believed in the spirit of Christmas. He um, even argued with a dude who was being bah humbug. Yep. And, and then, uh, by the way, really quickly, mm-hmm. that that Pixar movie that they pitched, it's ridiculous, but I'd see it. I would totally watch it, and I would probably cry. Like, I do an every and I, fucking Pixar movie. And I love it. And I love it because they even referenced the movie saying Gina Rodriguez. As a highlighter. Yep. Although, uh... <laughs> bright up your world. Although, I don't know if Gina Rodriguez is uh, still in good standing now. Um, With, with uh, the stuff that went on earlier this year. This probably was still around while back. True. Uh, but yeah, uh, so, you know, he, obviously, uh, seeing him, seeing her make out with Edgar, because, uh, because, 
he he finally sees who she is. It's like, oh shit, you're the girl from the party. That makes so much sense. And it's just like, oh my god, you made out with my douchebag friend. Oh no. Which also, uh, which also, going slightly against rom com usual, and uh, also to say like how good of a guy Dash is. He still does the responsible thing to get her. Yeah, it to takes her, her home. Aunt. Yeah, it takes her to her aunt's house because he uh, because you know, he he got from the aunt in the first place, so he knows where the aunt is. So yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So so, but he still he he's crushed yep. mentally, but he still does the right thing. Yep, and, and then, helps her out. And but also he leaves like a like a, a quote message in the notebook and it's just like you know mm-hmm. okay so we, we set ourselves up for this disappointment you know I'm not the guy in your head you're not the girl in mine we should just give up on this now we probably shouldn't see each other anymore blah 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 um, you know usual usual sad rom-com like nah this ain't gonna work out type stuff mm-hmm. and Dash gets sad for about a week New Year's comes around and then he's just like, you know what? No, I can't stop thinking about her. I gotta fix this. I gotta fucking fix this. Because also, she, after he does that, she leaves him a note with her goodbye, saying that she's moving to Fiji. Yep. And all that. A plane out to, to Fiji at midnight after New Year's. Uh, so, you know, maybe that was the right call. No, I can't. I can't waste this chance. This is, this is the last shot I have. I'm gonna need some help. And so this is when he calls in the cavalry, and it turns out all his friends are at a fucking Jonas Brothers concert. Which, which I love that where he's like, "Oh hell no!" Uh, but he dude, still goes because he, dude, I, I got. He's say. definitely anti Jonas Brothers. Let me tell you, I I most certainly am not. I grew up I grew up in the High School Musical Camp Rock era. The Jonas Brothers. I'm unapologetically a, a Jonas Brothers fan, 100. percent Nick and, Nick was all because he's so damn talented. He knows all the instruments and you know his and fight I, with diabetes and, and love, stuff. He honest, if I'm being honest with you, he wasn't mine. My favorite. You seem like a Kevin guy. You're a Kevin guy. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. <laughs> the 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 overlooked goofball guy. Oh yeah, you 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 and you and Elizabeth both seem seems like Kevin people. Elizabeth is a big Kevin guy or girl. Um, she's she's a big Kevin fan. Um. But yeah. yeah, Kevin was always my favorite. Yep, no, I, 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 but yeah, so Nick, of all people, like, um, dash them advice. He goes, no, you gotta go all out. You gotta be a little bit more vulnerable if you really want to yeah. show this girl how you feel. Yeah, I, I love it though because it's because, uh, Dash goes to see them and he's like, we need to talk because I need to get Lily back and and he's like can we go can one we go, can of the we go? Yeah. yeah he's like can we go somewhere private and he's like oh no we got it <laughs> and it's like oh. I got the perfect place yep and we find out lo and behold the perfect place is the Jonas Nick Brothers Jonas's yeah. Jonas's yep the, the, <laughs> that's hilarious and it's just like wait and Jonas and it's just like oh yeah we went to band camp <laughs> which is which I is, actually googled it, to see if he was in Camp Rock, because that would have been at the I, cherry on that's, the tree. That's what I thought. But he I wasn't. I was hoping he was a Camp Rock kid. Like, just a random extra in Camp Rock, so that that could be a reference. But no. Uh, yeah, I, I was yeah. hoping for it. But nah. Same. I even Googled it to try to see. Because he, he even said he, well, was, he, he said he was a counselor at my band camp. And I was just like, wait! No! Is this a Camp Rock reference? It is a Camp Rock reference, but not Camp Rock yeah. co-star. It's cool, but that was still nice. That was still nice but, for me. And I, um, and I love that where where this scene ends with Dash hugging him and being like, "Thank you, Nick Jonas." 
<laughs> yep, and then and and everybody else leaves to go help with you know Operation Cinderella, and then but but Priya, Priya of course stays behind. It's like hi. It's, it's Priya, like, Priya come go. on. Bye. Oh my god, it was so good. That was so good. I'm I'm not gonna lie. Yes. Uh, I, definitely, I'm I'm I may or may not have been in Priya's shoes because Nick was my <laughs> favorite. Nick was my favorite. But um, but yeah, so he because uh, we kind of have to start. Yeah. So, up, yeah. So yeah. So yeah. So let's let's accelerate this. So they end up doing this huge, elaborate like like New Year's like going away party, setting up in the Strand because of course that's the place they first met. That's where the place where the game began. And 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 of course there's roadblocks like the brother being yep. kind of bahumbuggy himself and also i love it because they do they do another rock on trope thing where she gets out of the taxi yep and runs yep but then but then i also love it because later on she addresses that she left her parents in the taxi and they're probably not going to be happy with her, which yeah, is but... something that they never really address in rom-coms. Yeah, so that was, that was really sweet, really funny. A nice moment. And even like, you know, even Sophia, she's like, I could hook y'all up with the food. It's like, and then, you know, of course, um, you know, Boomer's like, I got you on the Christmas decoration. Besides, I'm cool with the Santa elf now. So we, we got it. And the Santa Elf actually helps her get inside the Strand, so that was really cool. Um, yeah, yes, it was. And uh, we see that in the Strand, he's got like a little taste of Manhattan, and all the uh, different like, little dares, like the mochi, the salty pret, the salty park pretzel, and uh, the cheese on apple pie. Yep. And Which, he's man, like, I delicious. wanted to, I wanted to give you one final taste of New York before you left. Mm. It's really sweet. Yep. And then, like, uh, so they're about to leave after they turned out to be locked in. It's like, well, we, oh, no, he's on a date, and it's just like, well, I guess we're stuck. And so, like, they share an epic kiss. Like, of course, right as the ball drops, right as the fireworks go off. Which is, she initiates the kiss, which is definitely character growth for her. Yep. And also character growth for her. He says, we could call your parents. And she's like, they don't know where I am. We yep. can leave it for a bit. Yeah, so she, she gets a little bit on the wild side. I like that. Again. Really, really nice little character development there, but yeah, mm -hmm. all in all, this this show is really freaking sweet, you guys. I would love to yeah, see. They... I, I would love season that explores other holidays like a Halloween and the Thanksgiving or some or Valentine's Day or some shit like that. Um, yeah, that that would be really cool. Also, um, I just want to point out real quick that uh, right as they're doing like the epic romantic moment. They do a montage of the whole show mm. with awesome music in the background, and that really got me choked up, like in a like happy crying. Yeah, kind yeah, of way. oh yeah, one hundred percent, same, same. And then also, like we do, they do the typical rom com thing of they showing the rest of the cast, and like I said, Boomer and Sophia really happy about that. I'm glad that like the like the quote unquote discarded second love interest don't just uh like end up unhappy. I'm not saying that everybody needs to be dating and like it's just really sweet because like because mm -hmm. Bo Boomer even acknowledged before it's like Sophia's great. She's just not great for you. And and brother gets back with his and he buys him a notebook which is fucking sweet and yeah. Yeah, and like you said, it would be really cool. I don't know how they'll keep up with the dares, but it would be interesting to see them do more dares. Also, get more into, like we said, the stuff with Grandpa and the, the great the aunt. aunt. Yep, and also 
like Lily's grandma and Dash's mom, stuff like that. Yeah, get more into all of that. Yeah, that would be really cool. Um, yeah. But yeah, so overall, we really liked it. Uh, this is a nice, smooth palate cleanser. Um, just a really good, warm and fuzzy. Yeah, uh, even though we, we, even though we didn't get ri really to cover it, the last two scheduled shows that we have had were on intense stuff. Yep. But yeah, so uh, let's go ahead and quickly do plugs. Brian, you actually have stuff to plug this week. Yeah. Congrats. Yeah, uh, Welcome back I've to been, YouTube. I missed out two reviews because uh questioning whether or not I wanted to review. Also, life got in the way. Also, channel chase got in the way because we missed the last two weeks, but it was part of it was due to uh, marathoning and so all that. Um, but anyway, I am currently covering at least trying to, The Mandalorian on my channel. And I might cover more in the future. If it if it's not at a bad time and it uh and I can catch up in time, I might try to review Pennyworth. Nice. Because that's coming back in December. It has it has an awkward schedule though. It's it's a little weird. Uh, at least if it's the same as last season, so we'll see. I, I'm not even sure if I'm like entirely going to be able to cover it because my free trial of ethics expired. Um, that's that's true. Um, but uh, so that's a maybe. But also there are other shows that are on the maybe list. Definitely when the Arrowverse and everything comes back, I'll start reviewing again. Yeah. So uh, so at the very least, Brian will be back in January. If if schedule permits, I want to maybe also try to cover Walker. Oh, nice, nice, nice. Uh, but yeah, so uh, for me, the shows I'm covering are, well, This Is Us is not going to be back until January. They're taking a massive break, but I am covering This Is Us. Uh, a Million Little Things isn't coming back for two weeks, but I'm covering A Million Little Things. Uh, the Good Doctor, I'm also covering. I'm also covering A Teacher, which is a mini series, and it's almost done. Uh, we're on episode six this week um, out of, I want to say, ten. Uh, man, Kate Mara is really good in this. She's super creepy and makes me feel uncomfortable, but like a very subtle creepy. It's, and it, it's really well acted. And uh, same for Nick Robinson. He's just great in this as well. Uh, really, nice. really, really enjoy that show, even though like it's icky, but it's supposed to be. Um, I'm thinking about maybe covering Big Sky. Will depend uh, depends, because again, like uh, you know, new shows coming out, more stuff. Uh, also, I stream on Twitch pretty much daily, do FGO stuff, and uh, Among Us on Sundays. Um, so uh, if you're into that, go check that out. Uh, links are all in the description. Same for Brian's YouTube channel. Also check it out. Um, and eventually when we get back to the swing of things, uh, me and Mimi will finish off our Sandman review series for Book Dragon Reviews. That podcast will return eventually. Uh, so look forward to that. But yeah, we will catch you guys next week for another episode of Channel Chasers. I, did we actually say, oh, we're doing Animaniacs next week, right? Yeah, Animaniacs. Uh, so we were going to do another show, but Jada, the, the big show that just ended, but and, Jay uh, doesn't and I, think that I, he I, can. I, I, and also, I heard that the the, epi the final episode was terrible, like really, really bad. Like uh, a quote from a friend that I got was 15 years down the drain. So, yeah. Because I heard a Dyke or Hard fan who said that they liked it. Uh, I mean, I, uh, yeah, I guess I've, I've heard from two different people who are like super hardcore into it, like that it was pretty bad. So I don't know. Um, I, I don't, I don't, I don't want to do a whole show and just shit on it at the end. Um, so um, let's go for more wacky. Yep. And uh, you know, a, a blast from the past. You know, a big part of both of our childhoods. Uh, very excited to check out this Animaniacs reboot. 
Um, also, I'll be covering the Adventure Time special because I'm a big Bubbleine stand and uh, very excited for that. Uh, that's on HBO Max. Going to cover that as soon as I can. And I'm possibly going to do a video on the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air reunion because I watched that and it was really great. Uh, and I might want to talk about it. It all depends. But yeah, stay tuned for all that. Uh, we'll catch you guys next week. All right, Peace. see ya.